Hello, Busy Power. This is Zath. Welcome to Meet the Staff. Uh, today, uh, we have a very special episode on the show where we interview the faces behind the monitors to show you the lovely people who help around Busy Power, making it a wonderful place for all of you to enjoy your time, or at least spend time that would be spent on homework or other productive areas. But Busy Power is also productive and good, so it works in the long term. <laughs> so today, we have a very special guest. We have Black Six himself. Hi, Hi guys. How's it going, Pablo? It's going good. How about you? Not bad. I like the uh, the the setup. I was uh, realizing that I think it's the uh, most like legit and good one that we have. So uh, y'all <laughs> and the other side can be sure that the footage all throughout is going to be fantastic. This episode. It should <laughs> be. Yeah. This is actually my first time recording. I recently moved, so this is the first time recording the new setup. So we'll see how it goes. Ooh. Okay, so we get to start it off strong with this show. Good, good. I like it. I'm feeling it. I, 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 I it's, it's, it's a good omen for the, for the, <laughs> for the show, for the house, for the everything. It all works together. <laughs> cool, cool. So, um, let's uh, do a quick look at the set that we're going to be building today first. Sure. So we have got the uh, mystery machine. So this is one of the Scooby Doo sets from this year. Seven five nine zero two, three hundred one pieces. Retails for a mere thirty dollars, so not Ooh. a bad deal. It's a fairly big box uh, for a thirty dollars set as well. So um, I was a huge Scooby Doo fan growing up. Definitely excited to see how this set uh, stacks up. Interesting. Yeah, I guess the price. Hmm. It's good though. I, I I'm, I'm glad to hear that the mystery machine is is affordable for anyone who is looking for it. That's really good. Cool. Yeah, so I guess I'll open this up and get the noise out of the way. Yes, the the the, the crackling of the of the bags, the delectable sound of the Lego pieces. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so we've got a few bags here. We've got one, two, and three. And some nice instructions. Probably some stickers in here. Yeah. Huge sticker sheet. This is going to be fun. Wow. I'm sure. Ooh, that's gonna. Oh, I. Lo I'll show I love that it. to the other camera as well. The vibrant God. colors. The you can just hear the the the. Uh, it was, that was Hanna Barbera, right? Was uh, Scooby Doo? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Along with you know the Jetsons and uh, Flintstones and all those fun themes. That's good. I was right there for a second. I was like, Pablo, do not have the wrong reference ready. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. All right. Yeah, I mean so. that was like the classic, classic cartoons for so long. Yeah, it really is just the epitome of Saturday morning cartoons. Uh, fun. Every once in a while, reuse same backgrounds and just. Waking up in the morning to enjoy some good old cartoons. I haven't seen any of the uh, of the of the new shows though, because I feel like with uh, Bright, they come up with like a new Scooby Doo show every like five years, right? Something. Yeah, like that. I think they reboot it every now and then. Uh, I definitely don't keep up with it. Yeah, it's just the classic was good enough, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we could can't also break what, or can't fix what's not broke, right? Exactly. It's just like Lego. <laughs> Well, no. Bionicle might be the only exception to that, but that's only because Bionicle is, like, a special place in our hearts. <laughs> okay, so, uh, we are going to begin with the official uh, Meet the Staff question. So, Andrew, you have to choose from one of these four, but you don't have to choose wisely because it's your option, so any of those answers is correct. Awesome Sauce, Cool Beans, Neato Burrito, or Chilled Legumes? I think I have to go with um, Cool Beans on that one. Okay. I was a, a big fan of Doug back in the day, and that was Skeeter's, uh, one of his like catchphrases. You just go Cool Beans. Yes. So that, oh. That's uh, where my heart goes to. That's good. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to have another. That's. I was talking about this with a friend earlier about how I was kind of suffered with the uh, with the animation department because I watch all of my TV shows dubbed in Spanish. So people mention like SpongeBob or Doug or Hey Arnold and I'm like, I wish I could remember more episodes, but they were all not as great as the original. So I'm glad though that at least Doug, even though I never watched it in English, I knew there was a reason why I liked it. And this is confirmed <laughs> to me. There's a reason why I, 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 I knew I enjoyed it. Also the cool like characters and the, the little animation at the end of every episode. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, that was a great classic show. Some some good Nickelodeon. Oh yeah, no Nick. Nick and Cartoon, I mean, obviously they were like the two big ones, but they really had some like, really good programming. Granted, this might be the nostalgia talking where, you know, we think that everything that was in our childhood was great, but I think that we can fairly say that very uh, 
unbiased wise, those were the golden days. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I haven't gone back to try to watch it, but I feel like it would hold up. Yeah, I think so. I think those shows, like, they were good enough. They were they, like, like, like the creators. They they knew what was good, and they kept it going in the in a, in, a, in a good kind of streak of good quality. I guess we could call it like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Uh, let us begin with questions about Lego, because animation is lovely and wonderful, but uh, Lego is what we're here for. So, Andrew, how did you begin your story with Lego? Um, you know, I don't know exactly when I got my first set. Uh, mm -hmm. It was probably, you know, I was like four or five, somewhere around there. Um, my, my grandparents were probably the ones who got me hooked into it at first. Um, I was the only child on one side of my family, uh, mm -hmm. only grandchild. So, you know, they like to spoil me rotten. Uh, so that meant I was, was getting like little small Lego sets every time I would visit <laughs> them and stuff. Um, back then, Lego sets would sit on shelves a lot longer. So uh, I actually, even though, you know, I was growing up mainly in the 90s, I was getting sets from the 80s and stuff that were still on shelves. So I have some nice classic space and uh, some older castle sets that nice. were some of the ones that first started getting me into Lego. That's pretty good. That's I'm 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 very peanut butter and jelly about that. <laughs> <laughs> what were uh, of those kind of themes uh, your favorites, or were there any that during the '90s kind of quickly took the spot as Andrew's uh, go-to theme, either to get or to look at in the toy aisle and think, "Oh, I wish I had more of those." Um. I think starting off, probably one of my favorites was that classic space, uh, some of the Space Police, mm -hmm. and uh, then M-Tron and Blacktron 2. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the themes that really caught my eye and really sucked me in uh, going mm -hmm. on, though, was um, AquaZone. That was oh, yes. a big one in, I think, 94 it came out. Um, so that one really, really sucked me in and you know years later i found out that that was actually one of the first themes that christian faber worked on uh who of course we all know for his awesome work on bionicle so he's just been uh making awesome themes that have been you know pulling me in for for a couple decades now so the conclusion that we're getting at is that whenever christian faber's name is attached to something you know it's going to be good exactly <laughs> And also, that'll be a quick aside, for any of you who are watching this video, you should pause and look at BZ Power's Conversations with Christian Faber. Lovely human being, brilliant creative person, and as you just heard from somebody else, not just Bionicle, but AquaZone also, another wonderful creation of his. That's yeah. really cool though, that's lovely. Uh, it's, again, you know, I, I only kind of stuck with Bionicle very early on, so I only kind of got a lot of the other uh, Lego themes, second hat from other people. So every once in a while, I'll find pieces and, and know from pictures or something maybe where they came from. Uh, but it's nice to have that connection to remember the, the, the different lines directly, remember, remember kind of when you got those sets or uh, when you got pieces of that kind. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, eventually, uh, after a while, it's, it, be, it goes from just getting a few Lego sets here and there and you realize one day that you have crates upon crates and that you don't see it ending anytime soon. <laughs> so when did you realize that Lego had you hooked? Um, hmm. That's a, that's a probably a little tricky one. I, I was actually starting to kind of uh, fall out of the hobby a little bit when I was in high school. But, um, you know, I think the first uh, convention I went to in 2006 Mm -hmm. um, definitely sucked me back in and it was like, all right, there's no way I'm getting out of this at this point. Uh, just getting to meet people in person and kind of put faces with names uh, and realize that you know, these people I've been talking to online really were that awesome definitely yeah. made me want to stick with it. That's good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that real life uh, interaction and conventions also played a role. That means that y'all should go to conventions if you can. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, there's so many in the U.S. and abroad. Uh, we have a whole forum on Busy Power dedicated to that. If you're looking for a place to go and want to find out who else is going to be there, um, if you know you're you're overseas and you don't see a topic for one, uh, feel free to start a topic and we'll like help you find an event that's nearby. Exactly. Because uh, here's the thing: all of you have to remember that lugs are popping up left and right, and you can create your own. So 
as long as you have an initiative and you want to get excited about something, you can be sure that the LEGO community and the Bionicle community is going to be behind you, to support you, and be very excited about meeting you in person so you can realize LEGO fans are just as cool in real life as they are behind the screen, which is one of the reasons why we have this series. <laughs> Aha! <laughs> all comes full circle. Exactly. It's, it's all connected. See, it's all about finding the little dots that make it all go together. <laughs> so, um... You know, uh, and 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 I and I like that you mentioned that uh, you know during the high school years, the period when you usually have the uh, the, the the dark ages, uh, you kind of had Lego conventions as the thing that uh, took you out of that area. Um, how big of a role? Uh, I mean, obviously, BZ Power played a big role, but. Uh, Along with BZ Power, or aside from BZ Power, how big of a role did Bionicle play, uh, both in your first few years as a LEGO fan, and then in the later years, in that time of high school when Dark Ages was kind of looming around the corner? Um, I'd say it played a, a pretty pretty major role. I mean, so like Bionicle, I got into kind of just I was like on the outside, like on the top edge of the target age. Um, so I still got into it, but, um, you know, not a lot of my friends did. And so while I had kind of been a part of the Lego community online a little bit, um, I had gone to like Lugnet and some other sites like that to, to talk to people. Um, I hadn't really engaged too much in the Lego community until Bionicle and, uh, BZ Power. So that was definitely a, a big, big factor in what kept me going. Good, good, because I'm. It, it is one of those things that makes me happy, you know, when 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 you read either you know brick by brick the the book about Lego rewriting the rules of innovation, or you hear about the story of Lego, or you read books about the history of Lego, and you always find out uh, that Bionicle did really play a big kind of decisive part in saving Lego for a few years. There, it's nice to know that one way or another, we were part of the group that contributed to keep Lego afloat for a while. Yeah, yeah, and Bonacle is definitely one of the themes that, you know, helped keep me into Bonacle because it's just the, the story was really cool and, you know, all, all everything you guys already know about it, but definitely helped keep me in there. Yeah. Do you remember um, what the first few years with Bonacle were like? Uh, did you just get the sets? Did you uh, frequent the website every day? Was it a mixture of both comics, the books? Um, I mean, I think so early on when the we were starting to get the first teasings of Bonacle, you know, I had uh, bought the bunch of the Throwbot sets. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I had a little experience with the Lego buildable action figures. Um, yep. And so as the sets started coming out in the U.S., since they didn't come out until the summer uh, here where mm -hmm. they were out earlier in Europe, um, you know, I found this site called Bonacle Zone, and yeah, I was pretty much on there every day. You know, and I remember my freshman year of high school, uh, I'd go into like our, our computer lab or something to log on to the mm -hmm. site to see what was going on. Uh, so yeah, I was uh, on pretty much, and I was buying, you know, as many sets as I could get. Um, and, uh, you know, as long as uh, my parents weren't saying like, oh, aren't you too old for that stuff yet? Um, <laughs> And so eventually, kind of like a, a couple years later, I was buying a lot less sets, but I was still on BZ Power every day, seeing what mm -hmm. was going on in the community. Good, good. I'm glad to hear that, yeah. Even if the sets decreased, the, the love for the community and for BZP stayed strong. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So we're going to do a quick break on the questions, and we're going to look now at the sets. So let's look at how the mystery machine is going. All right, so we'll start out with the minifigs. So we've got um, Shaggy over here. <laughs> Um, he's got the hair perfect, uh, nice dark hair, red dude. legs, fairly basic shirt print. Mm -hmm. um, he does have the, the flesh printing on it, so kind of not too reusable. Uh, he has the nice dual printed arms though, so he has like the short sleeves. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he's got an alternate face, of course. <laughs> and then we've got Scooby, who's actually yeah. two pieces, so the head can pop off. Um, that okay. adds, so at least there's some posability to here, mm -hmm. which was cool. I was kind of expecting it to be like the uh, the Golem uh, minifigs from Lord of the Rings, where yeah. there really wasn't much uh, posability. He doesn't have any anti studs on his feet. They're just kind of designed to go around it, but um, mm -hmm. to go around the studs. Mm -hmm. So I guess it can uh, snap on. So here we've got the mystery machine so far. 
Uh, wow. I've got one half. The other half is uh, a little bare. Uh, I've got some space on the inside. You can see the steering wheel. Uh, lots of stickers on this set for sure though. Like pretty much this whole side here are stickers. This is printed though, which is awesome. Oh, uh, good. Because I can't imagine having to put a sticker on a three by three dish. Uh, <laughs> it's so yeah, like, it's coming along pretty good. Good, good. I'm, yeah, no, I'm glad we seeing see. both the stickers and the shape. Oh. Scooby, no. <laughs> yeah, he, he can uh, fit on there. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's really good. I'm yeah. I'm glad seeing all the like little components of the set, the stickers, the set coming together, even just like the scale and the 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 general shape of it. It's very faithfully recreated. Yeah, and some lots of great colors. I mean, we've got lots of this uh, lime green and uh, bright orange too, and uh, lots of snot pieces if you're into that. Ooh, yes, snot building is always good. Good, good. All right. So now that we have checked on the set, we are going to return to the questions. So. Uh, you mentioned uh, going to uh, a website called uh, Bionicle Zone, and which later became BZ Power. And of course, we all start off on the website, but eventually, uh, there are those of us who are uh, lucky enough to uh, move to that next level and get to uh, actually contribute to the site. So, how was the journey for you to go from regular member to becoming a staff? So my uh, route is definitely not one that uh, you guys are going to be able to do today <laughs> since the site has grown and changed so much. Uh, so actually back before BZ Power started, this is early 2001, um, I had run a Yahoo group uh, for Bionicle. Um, now, yeah, I think there's still Yahoo groups. Maybe it was a club back then. I don't, Yahoo changed it around a bunch. But basically, like a message board um, on their site, uh, so you don't have to pay for any hosting costs or anything. Mm -hmm. And I found this Bonicle Zone site. I'm like, oh, this is way cooler than anything I can do on the Yahoo platform. So I'm going to jump ship in and go over there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started posting there a lot. You know, I told all the members in the group that they should come over. And, uh, you know, after. Uh, maybe about a week or so, maybe not even a week, I went and I saw that um, someone, like another member, had recently been uh, made a moderator. Um, I believe this was Lego Mecca. Um, he became a staff member for the BBC forums. Uh, so uh, he was, I think, one of the first moderators. You can check out the staff history topic to get the dates exactly. Uh, so I said, oh, so I guess Dimensioneer is, is making some moderators and stuff. Let me go see if he needs any help. So I just sent him a private message and I uh, was like, hey, uh, if you need any help, you know, I've been following a lot of the promotions and stuff that Lego's been doing with Bionicle. Um, mm -hmm. So just let me know. And he's like, oh, yeah, sure. Uh, that sounds like a plan. And he made me a moderator of the promotions for him. And uh, wow. that was it. Um, and then, yeah, over the years, you know, I was a moderator for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, then I became a reporter as well, then a global mm -hmm. moderator, and then finally uh, an admin. That's so cool. Because, yeah, I, I, I think so far with all the people that we've interviewed here, they've only had either the one or the two positions and usually kind of staying in the same area, either blogs or, or forums. So how has that been, being able to kind of experience moderating, uh, reporting for a while, uh, now as kind of... Uh, one of the head honchos. How has it been, been to experience all those different areas of BZP? Uh, I mean, it definitely was a, a good path to kind of, you know, gradually get me uh, ready for being an admin. I would not have wanted to step in as an admin straight away. Mm -hmm. uh, you get to kind of see a little bit of everything on the site um, and kind of like learn the ins and outs uh, of the different aspects so that, you know, now that I'm on uh, in the top job right here, I can uh, kind of understand what the other staff are doing uh, to, uh, to kind of make sure that they can do their jobs as well as can be. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to have to go to the question that is, uh, I think, very exciting for everyone. If it's, it, it might be tough to answer because I don't think there is a regular day on BZP, but if you had to describe a regular day uh, in your position on BZ Power nowadays, what is it like? Um, I'd say a regular day on the site. I mean, I try to, to spend as much time browsing the forums and stuff as I can, see what, uh, what's going on, make sure I'm staying up to date. There's 
Uh, some forums that, you know, personally I frequent just because I'm interested in those areas, so I'll go to those a, a little more. Uh, I love to see like the new creations members are making and things like that. Uh, I don't spend a huge amount of time in the off-topic mm. forums uh, just because there's just so much going on in yeah. there and it's not directly Bionicle and LEGO related. Yep. Um, so yeah, mainly just kind of going on there, seeing what reports have come in, uh, checking around for news to see if there's anything we need to report on on the front page, uh, things of that nature. You know, uh, go in the back end, see uh, who's been joining up and seeing if we, I need to approve any new accounts and uh, you know, all sorts of things. Checking on contests, um, you know, like you kind of hinted at, uh, no two days exactly are the same. So there's always different activities going on, uh, different things that need checking up on. Cool, cool. That's that's uh, yeah. It's 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 cool to hear uh, all of that because I think especially with a position like yours as an administrator, I think it's interesting. Uh, it's it's kind of like a paradox type situation for members who who don't know much about the staff. It's like, you know, the admin, they're like, oh, they're everywhere. They know everything. But conversely, also, it feels like there's not much that we know about what the position entails, just because it is so important to the daily running of BZP. Uh, so it's cool to be able to hear a bit of, like, the kind of things that you do and how you've also adapted the routine to it. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's very nice, and I can say this not only as... A staff member, but as a member of BZP, it's good to hear that uh, you still continue frequenting the forums, not you know solely to uh, approve posts, but genuinely because of an uh, interest and uh, kind of being invested in what the in what the members are posting and what they're doing and seeing what the what the community is. Uh, I guess kind of bringing every week, every month, every year. So it's cool to hear that aspect as well of the of the routine. Yeah, I've definitely learned over the years. I mean, there, there's no kind of instruction manual or anything on how, how to run a, uh, a website. Um, or if there is, I haven't found one. Maybe I should write one. Yeah, uh, now I've been doing this for so long. Uh, you know, and you, I've definitely learned over the years that you've got to stay engaged with the community. You've got to make sure you're in tune with what they're, they're doing, what they're interested in, uh, so that you can kind of better serve them and kind of figure out what it is you can do to help make the site better and more fun for everyone. Yeah. So I'm going to uh, ask the question, because it's one of the things that I've always been personally very interested in is... You know, I think as you see the advent of new technologies, of new media, of stuff like that, uh, you have either new companies, new modes of entertainment that were basically non-existent five, ten years ago. Uh, things like Let's Plays, which BZ Power is doing now. <laughs> things like uh, companies that make company uh, that, that or that make content, for example, for YouTube or things like that. Uh, you know, I mean, Twitter, Facebook, all these companies and kind of. Uh, things that spring up and it's interesting then to hear what you say about uh, really having to kind of learn the position as you go along because it really is something that didn't exist in any way shape or form five ten years ago so how uh, or, or, or what things have you used uh, during all of this process uh, as a kind of unofficial guide as a kind of unofficial manual as a kind of unofficial uh, source of inspiration, ideas, source of advice during all of these years? Uh, any uh, websites, any people, any uh, anything in general? What has helped Black Six be uh, the admin that he has become in all this journey? Uh, all right, so um, I mean, I guess to kind of address uh, some of the, the points you're uh, talking about, you know, definitely BZ Power has changed a lot and we've, we've we're definitely behind the times for for quite a while. We realized that you know uh, we could not just rely on the momentum of Bionicle to to keep ourselves going. Mm -hmm. um, and so you know, one of my other kind of hobbies and interests is uh, you know video games. Um, mm -hmm. You know that's kind of why I do the the Twitch Tuesdays now. And I think that was probably one of the big things that uh, I've used to help keep in touch with. Uh, with what's going on and kind of what we can do is uh, you know, kind of looking at some of the different uh, things that the video game community does because 
You know, I don't think there's a lot of other companies out there that really engage with their fans the way Lego does. Um, and I think the video game community might be one of the closest kind of comparisons where mm -hmm. what the ways that you know, the, the developers engage with their fans and the publishers and then all the community sites out there uh, kind of uh, you know, you know, show what's going on and uh, kind of do different activities. You know, like the, the Let's Plays, for example, that definitely was you know, pretty much a something that was inspired by that and uh, all the different ways that they utilize social media, you know, to do contests and, and things like that. Uh, so definitely kind of helped us look in the right direction for, for an industry that I think is, is doing a pretty good job of it and uh, ways we can kind of get inspired uh, to do things. And also just listening to the members, uh, seeing what it is that they're doing and what they're interested in um, and seeing if there's a way that we can kind of go off of that and uh, you know, make things uh, better and find things that interest them. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm especially, uh, I'm very happy to hear that part because I think that it is one thing to you know, have the experience, have the knowledge and have, I mean, basically by this point, over 10 years of experience, but it's also good to hear that even with that, even knowing that you have learned a lot of things and knowing that you uh, do have some expertise in the, top, in the subject, that you still look to the members, look to the community, look to the outside world. It's not you just blocked in thinking that, you know, uh, the, the staff knows best and they don't have to pay attention to other things. It's good to know that uh, there is still that conversation with the members and what they want and what they think that should be done. Yeah, we've definitely learned a lot over the years that the members have a lot of good ideas out there. So um, it definitely pays to, to listen to what, uh, what everyone thinks and try to get as much feedback as possible. I mean, that's why you see us uh, doing surveys and polls and stuff to kind of get feedback. And, uh, you know, we just want to do the best job we can uh, with the site. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to take a break on the questions again to see how the Miss City machine is going. I see there's a precarious sticker placement, so yeah, I'll this, allow you this to... is a bit of an annoying sticker. It actually was going like right edge to edge, so oh. I'll pop that on there. So we've definitely got a little bit more. We've got the spots for the wheels now. Uh, both sides are done. Uh, we've got some nice... Uh, back feature, so the oh, back is going nice. to open up. Uh, we've got a bit of the interior going on, so you can see there's a couple computer displays on there. We've got oh. a, uh, a nice sandwich for uh, Scooby and Shaggy to eat, of course. Uh, there's a little sink and a stove. Um, yeah, definitely coming along. Um, pretty cool. We also built Fred. Uh, so we've got Fred here. He's got that nice kind of pompadour hair look, fresh yep. out of the 60s, nice blonde <laughs> color. He's got his uh, ascot on. Uh, he's got a scared face on the back. Uh, so he is ready to, to solve some mysteries. And he has a, uh, a newspaper. It is the Daily Babbler. And it says Tree <laughs> Comes to Life. So it's actually, I think, related to this set. And the uh, bad guy. Oh, and he also has a magnifying glass. Missed that before. Cool. You gotta find those clues. And yes. uh, I love it that these magnifying glasses, you know, actually work and they'll actually like magnify. Uh, exactly. I just, I just remember the the, 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 the that 2006 Paraka playset with, with the light going through, through and you're like, this is so cool. cool. <laughs> 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 yeah, they've definitely come up with a lot of cool little ideas and ways to use those over the years. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I remember that I think the next one that I got it was a, 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 a Lego, Lego City, city set, set that also used the same mechanism. And I was like, oh, so did they use it to make like a... Uh, magnifying, magnifying thing. I was, I was like, like, cool, cool. Good, good for you, you Lego. Lego. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, now, now that that's done, we will return, return to the questions. questions. Um, let's, let's see, so we've, we've talked about, about Lego, Lego. We've, we've talked about, about life as a fan, fan. we've talked about, about life on BZ Power. Easy power. Uh, eventually uh, though, uh, even being a fan on BZP, being, being, even being, I can't English today, even being a fan of Lego, uh, goes, goes into, into real, real life at one, one, some, some point or another. And, and for those of us who have kept, kept going as fans, uh, it, it definitely finds ways to pop up in real life. So, so how, how has your LEGO fan uh, uh, connection, uh, your LEGO interest, your BZ power, power interest uh, popped, popped up in, in, life, in real life? Um, you know, at this point, um, you know, there's a while in, in high school and college mm -hmm. where, you know, I, I wasn't really open about uh, my Lego obsession, so mm -hmm. not a lot of people knew. But 
you know, these days it's kind of like, you know, Lego is the cool thing now and I am much more uh, open about it. So people know I'm you know, like the Lego guy. So um, you know, people bring it up like, oh, did you see, hear about this thing that Lego is doing? I'm like, yeah. And then like I can go on and on about it, like going into even more depth uh, on the topic. Like uh, I was at... Uh, Thanksgiving dinner and someone's like, oh yeah, you know, I saw this uh, documentary on Netflix and they were talking about like how Lego almost went out of business. I'm like, yeah, and then uh, Bionicle and Star Wars saved it. Like, oh yeah, that's exactly what they said. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, so it definitely crops up a lot. You know, I, I have um, polo shirts from Brick Fair that uh, I get for volunteering. So I wear those to work all the time. Uh, so people kind of see those and they ask about them. And you know, so I get to explain to them about this crazy uh, Lego convention that's uh, you know just a couple hours away that they should definitely go check out. Um, and you know I have some sets on my desk so people are always bringing those up and it's, it's definitely a great conversation starter and like I said it's the coolest new thing and when the Lego movie came out last year everyone was just like oh hey you see the Lego movie yet it's like yes I've seen it four times yeah, of course exactly. it's like, it's like not even that we went to an advanced screening a week before yes and yeah you were there with our me our creations boom <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun event Pablo that was that really was great so that we could do much that fun. that was so cool um, and that's one of the things yeah I think that's uh, for me it was one of the best examples of yeah the way that Lego and real life kind of uh, blends together not just because again we got invited a week in advance and because we got free sets and uh, some free books as well but I think the funniest moment for me and I don't know if I mentioned it to you at the time but it's something that has stayed with me because it just makes me laugh all the time was uh, you know so basically the context to the, to the story is uh, Lego was organizing a few like advanced screenings for press and some other families and they invited lo uh, local uh, uh, Lego fans to exhibit stuff and you know Lego fans we love our creations so much we do not want them to be tampered with with <laughs> o a few overexcited hands so understandably a lot of the people exhibiting there you know showed the their mocks but told kids obviously uh, you know uh, once the kids come and watch we're gonna tell them do not touch these things do not grab them Lego movie this is the first time we're watching it and we have this wonderful tear uh, creating scene with uh, Will Ferrell and Chris Pratt being like, you can build whatever you want and you can uh, ma ta make your creations whatever you want with them and suddenly the screen turns down and the kids go to see their mocks and you have all these terrified adult Lego fans being like, no, 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 <laughs> the movie was true, but please do not still touch our very precariously placed mocks. <laughs> yes, they are not craggled together. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, no, that's the thing, I just remember looking at the mocks being like, kids, please, look, I, that's the movie, it's great, but we, we're, we're purists, we do not use the craggle. <laughs> <laughs> craggle bad. Yeah, craggle bad, craggle, uh, it's good for movie magic and for plot development, but otherwise, no. <laughs> Well, although actually, I the one extension to that will be if you do have the set and they have, do have the craggle little piece thing, because that mm -hmm. was really fun to have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was a really cool little addition uh, in that set. I loved and look, quite a few of those Lego movie sets. They built like real life objects out of Lego, and I think they worked out really well there. It was so cool. It was that's it's one of the things that really shows you uh, where Lego has gone has gone as a company that they can have faith in, the, in, in, the, in their product enough to make something like the Lego movie, that they can coordinate well enough to make uh, products that really kind of enhance the experience of the movie, and then to keep the momentum going. I mean, with the Lego Batman spinoff, with the Lego movie sequel, even something like uh, using the, the, the Lego movie universe as a main point of Lego dimensions. Like, they know that it is... Uh, that, that, that it has worked well and that they have really kind of taken advantage of all the different angles as much as they could. Yeah, I mean, I think they did a great job making those characters um, and then incorporating all like the different IPs and stuff in there that, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be a, a long, long uh, lasting IP and people are going to be remembering that for quite some time. Yeah, it really is one of those movies that, I mean, I as LEGO fans, we would have probably enjoyed it, but it was a genuinely good movie, which was very refreshing to think, oh, good, the LEGO movie is actually a really, really, really fun experience to watch. So, yeah. uh, we did touch upon, then, uh, the real-life events and conventions. So, what has your uh, life been like a little bit now, more in-depth with conventions specifically? 
Say that again. Sorry, I was opening oh. a plastic bag. No worries. You're good. Uh, so we're uh, going a little bit more in depth uh, with uh, Lego conventions. Uh, what has your life been like uh, in that sense? How did you get started going to Lego conventions? How have you seen them kind of grow in advance? How have you changed, grown in advance with Lego conventions? I mean, so there, there are some BZ Power members like uh, Chocolate Frogs who started going to some of the conventions fairly early on. Um, I didn't go to my first one until 2006, uh, which was okay. the last Brickfest in Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so finally had some people who had been kind of going to these events convince me. It's like, oh, you need to go, you need to go. And it's like, all right. So, so I went, um, had a blast, and uh, it's kind of kept going. Um, and you know, now uh, it just it's just so much fun to be able to go and like hang out. With people in real life and everything. Yeah. Uh, get to you know, meet the people that you've just kind of known online, uh, talk to them, see all these awesome creations like in person. It definitely adds like a whole new level to it. Yeah. Um, and you know, I've been in like kind of a, a fairly fortunate position where, uh, especially this past year, I've been able to go to quite a few events. I've been able to get enough time off from work uh, mm -hmm. to make it out. Uh, to I think eight different events this year, which is just ridiculous. Wow! Uh, and I don't know why I did that to myself. <laughs> um, it's okay. But I mean, it's, also it's, it's with, a with the fulfillment. yeah, with, with the convention circuit, you know, I want to bring people's mocks to as many different places as possible and kind of just show them off. Um, so it's it's a blast getting to go uh, to different places in the country uh, and and in Canada now too. I've started going to meeting new people, uh, seeing their creations, kind of sharing what makes BZ Power BZ Power. Because you know, obviously Brick Fair Virginia uh, is the one everyone knows about. Uh, it's the one that BZ Power is the biggest biggest presence at. But there's you know so many other events out there that don't really have as much of a bionicle presence. Like when I went up to Brick Fet Toronto this year, mm -hmm. um, you know they had never really had a bionicle presence in the past uh, yeah. until uh, you know we we came out there, mm -hmm. and it was really cool kind of getting to experience and introduce more people to kind of the construction building uh, techniques and and just kind of the way we do things and getting to meet them and get their own. Uh, kind of feedback and what they think of Bionicle and how they picture it. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, because that's one of the things I think that's most interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, as you said, you know, being able to, for example, this year travel to eight conventions and doing so while fulfilling, you know, the role of, uh, you know, representative of BZP, of a uh, Bionicle fan and kind of Bionicle ambassador, of somebody who has to carry the creations of others and is uh, able to uh, kind of bring them around the country in different places to exhibit them. So how, do, how does that work? You know, because uh, for a lot of us, we just go to the convention either to see friends, to exhibit stuff, to win free Lego, or just to have four or five days of just like a Lego extravaganza. What's it like balancing those other roles uh, during the convention kind of season? Yeah, I mean, it can definitely be a, a little hectic, um, you know, adding all those other roles. And I also like to volunteer at some events, like host games and stuff. But uh, I think, you know, the fun definitely comes first. So uh, I get in there and, and try to set up the mocks as, as quickly as possible. Um, and, you know, once you've brought the same mocks to about two events, uh, you really kind of get a feel for them and you know how to set them up and how they're able to be posed and, you know, what you need to do to get them to stand up and, and not fall over. <laughs> and uh, so the, the setup process works pretty well and, you know, you kind of get a feel for that and you know by like the third event or so this year uh, I really had a system down pat with like how I organized packing the mocks and um, you know making sure I knew like which mocks kind of went where and so I could easily set them up and then easily pack them up again afterwards um, and so you know I, definitely it's all about the fun I think yeah. for at these events is you know I love bringing the people's creations to show off mm -hmm. um, but then you know once I'm there once I have the creations set up it's just like have as much fun as possible and kind of milk all the fun you can out of it good I'm glad to hear that because yeah we I mean I I, I think that I speak for all of us when I say that I appreciate that we all appreciate the work that you do, so it's good to hear that you also do get to continue to enjoy the convention circuit without being kind of uh, bugged with all those uh, other things that you get to do. 
Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't do it if I wasn't having fun. I mean, that's that's the kind of uh, takeaway from it all. You know, is make sure you're having fun, uh, whether it be running a fan site or like building creations or anything in the Lego hobby, right? I mean, this is a hobby for all of us. Yeah. Uh, so you got to be having fun. Otherwise, you know, you might want to think about doing something else. Completely agree. Completely agree. Everyone there should take note. Enjoy yourself because this hobby is every awesome. Everything is awesome. Everything is really cool. Uh, <laughs> so uh, with conventions, though, I always enjoy with this question. Uh, do you have a favorite memory or a memory that sticks out the most from the convention circuit from all of your time? Oh, man, that's tough. There's just so many, uh, so many different things that have gone on over the years. Uh, a favorite? Hmm. Or if you have so many, we can do like a top three of you on so we can get a, <laughs> a good breadth of... <laughs> Yeah, I know one that's got in, uh, brought up quite a bit um, in some of these other interviews is obviously New York Comic Con uh, last year for the reveal of Bonicle. Yeah. Um, that was definitely a, a top one in my mind. Um, I, there, there have been so many. I mean, like at uh, Brick Fair, New Jersey this year, we got to meet one of the Bonicle set designers. So that was really sweet. Um, you know, the let's see, other other highlights being uh, probably the first time that I met uh, Bionicle Rex, uh, which was at Toy Fair in uh, 2005. Uh, wow. Another another cool memory. You know, he was he was the the admin at the time. You know, I wasn't even an admin yet, so it was kind of all all about him. Yeah. Um, and so I got to kind of meet the guy behind BZ Power. Mm -hmm. uh, that was definitely really cool. Um, and let's see. I think maybe the the first time going to the West Coast for Brickfest 2009 because it was like, you know, now this hobby has not just brought me uh, to Virginia, which is like a you know a few hour drive. Now I've gone like all the way across the country for this hobby. Yeah, <laughs> that's gonna be so cool. Yeah, I mean, getting to see uh, so much of the country, but also so much of the of the of the of the fan community by virtue of kind of going different places. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was gonna ask. Uh, because when you brought up uh, Bionicle Rex, how has it been transitioning from first member on Bionicle Zone, uh, then transitioning to uh, kind of uh, just a member of the staff, and now to be one of the biggest uh, names that people also kind of get the same way that you felt maybe about Bionicle Rex in the past? How has that been for you? Just like that progression over the years to think, oh, I'm, I'm one of those people now that is like looked at as like, oh. I don't know, it's kind of, it's definitely weird at times. Um, at Brick Fair, New Jersey, there is a, mm -hmm. a point where I was just kind of walking around with uh, Wind Rider, looking okay. at some of the creations and stuff, and, and uh, someone just kind of, I must have seen me out of the corner of the eye, and it's like, oh, it's Black Six! And I'm like, <laughs> it was just a, a kind of weird moment. Um, there have been other times where, like, I'll, I'll be kind of talking to, to some people and someone will, will come up and introduce themselves and, like, they know who I am kind of thing and I don't really know know who they are. Yep. Um, you know, just because they follow some of the stuff we do on, on BZ Power on our YouTube channel. So it, it's definitely kind of surreal. Uh, it's definitely opened a lot of opportunities, you know, getting to meet lots of cool people through the community, people who work at LEGO. Um, and it's, it's a very gradual transition, so yeah. uh, so kind of built up over time, and uh, you know, it's I've, I guess I've gotten used to it at this point, mm -hmm. and uh, try to be as humble as possible. Like I, you know, I, I'm just running a, a fan site. We're, we're a larger fan site, but it's still for this niche hobby. You know, yeah. it's not like I am a, a, a famous movie actor or something like that. <laughs> that's for sure. I still have a day job that I have to do to pay the bills. Yeah. I, uh, the reason why I ask mostly is because, and I think I've alluded to this at almost every Meet the Staff episode, so I think it was time. I knew, I knew when this episode came up, I knew, okay, it is time to confront my, 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 my past. Uh, because my first Brick Fair, and I've mentioned it, I think, in every episode, the two uh, moments that I had. The first, the, 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 I think it was like a TFL panel that was hosted by the Brick Chick, Steve Witt and you, mm -hmm. where for, for, I, that was the first time I met Waffles, and that was the first time that like the two of us like were sitting there and got to meet Black Six in person. But then the second one, which still uh, creates a little bit of 
uh, cringe dash pride, depending on how Pablo's feeling during the day, was running of the bulls that year. Uh, <laughs> that we both got to be well, like one of the, some of the first like five or six people in line, and I just remember because I was. 15 at the time so I had to be with an adult so my mom was there and I was just losing it over black six is in front of the line <laughs> so that's why I just remember that I, I, I it's it's interesting to me exactly as you know somebody who's gone from a member uh, to more active member to now staff and seeing that kind of progression in how people see you it's always been interesting to see how somebody A who's been for, uh, there for BZP for so long but B somebody who's been involved in the fan or or, or, or or in the or in the AFOL community who's gone to conventions who's met people who's seen the ups and downs of the community of the toy line of Lego of Bionicle in general it's so interesting to see just how it kind of affects your life yeah yeah I mean it's definitely crazy to kind of look at you know how tight-knit the community is and how well people know each other and, and can just be friends you know I know some people might might think of the staff as unapproachable but uh, just just talk to us send us a private message you know come up to us at a convention and, and we're always down to, to talk about different things you know we're, we're just normal people we have our own ho other hobbies and other things we can talk about and uh, you know we're, we're all in this for the love of Lego very very true I hope you all heard that and highlighted that because it's very very true <laughs> so uh, since I, there are no sounds of delectable Lego pieces, I'm assuming that the set is finished. It is indeed. Let us take a look at the mystery machine. All right, so here we've got the finished mystery machine. Oh, that's uh, so cool. Definitely, I think, captures the look from the classic TV show, which is yes. one of the things that I loved that they were, were doing when I first saw these sets. Um, I mean, it's got the all of like the kind of hippie vibe to it with the crazy paint job and everything. Uh, you can so cool. see, so the, the top here uh, pops off and you can access the interior. Uh, you know, Shaggy and Fred can fit in the front uh, with plenty of space. Um, and of course the back, as we saw before, um, opens up. And here we've got, you know, a couple computers, uh, some sort of radar device. There's a, a little stove back here, mm. uh, the sandwich and a sink, and there's a spot for Scooby to stand. Um, yep. I guess. You know, there's a camera and a flashlight in there. Of course, okay. you know, traditional crime fighting gear or mystery right. busting gear. You need to be able to like look through those uh, haunted houses in the middle of the night. Um, you know, nice and compact. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it fits with kind of the, the theme really well. Um, you know, it feels like a, it's a very solid set too. So you definitely mm -hmm. feel like you got your money's worth. Um, I'd say the only, one of the only pieces of like negative feedback I'd have is that, you know, on the inside there's not enough room for Velma or Daphne in there too, with Scooby in there. I think if you took Scooby out, you could fit the two of them in, but you can't fit all five of the main characters in at the same time, which is a minor, minor complaint. Um, then we've also got this uh, tree. Uh, so, you know, in the, the TV show, there's always something after them. So I guess this is like some haunted tree that's uh, going after terrorizing people in the area. Um, but an interesting thing that I hear a lot of the, the Scooby-Doo sets have is that if you turn it around, there's actually a control panel back here. So you can tell that it's not actually like a uh -huh. uh, ma magical or mysterious thing. It's really just some robotic contraption that's uh, controlled by, uh, in this case, we've got the creeper. Uh, you know, and, and he's just con controlling it to kind of scare people off so he can presumably steal the uh, little gemstone here. And so the creeper too, he's got this nice um, spring yellowish green uh, head and hands. Um, but on the back, there's a couple buttons on his head. So you can clearly see that it's just a mask and he's not really some, uh, some undead uh, being. And he's oh, some, so some great good. print job on the torso. There's kind of like this raggedy vest. Yeah. Uh, de definitely a solid set. I mean, it brings back a lot of memories of the uh, the show growing up. Uh, definitely is going to be a display piece that I'll have um, out on my shelf somewhere for for quite a while, just yep. because of the the nostalgia factor that it has. And I have that's to find a way to get Dalf Daphne and Velma to complete the gang. That's so cool. Just hearing everything. I mean, even just like the buttons and yeah, just the attention to detail and the attention to to the show's detail also, especially just. So, so, so cool. That's yeah, so exciting. Yeah. And there's just like so many play features in here. Like, and there's, there's also like these stickers on the inside where huh? the, the gang is like posting their, their hints and clues as they try to solve the case. Yeah. So 
lots of play value too if you are you know some a kid buying this for the play value and lots of great parts and you talk about the lime green at the the beginning and on the yeah. top you have this uh you know the uh medium azure i forget if it's like the light or medium whatever um but uh, just a lot of that in plates and slopes. Um, so good, some great colors in here. So for 30 bucks and 301 pieces, even if you're not a Scooby-Doo fan, you get some great pieces out of it. That's but if you're not a Scooby-Doo fan, what's wrong with you? Exactly, you re <laughs> reevaluate your life, hopefully on BZ Power, because we will help you, we will be wonderful, and we will be very welcoming. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think it's been slightly alluded to throughout all of this, uh, and maybe the answer did lie somewhere in this episode, but just as a final kind of bookend for everyone to be able to hear, uh, directly from Black Six himself, uh, what are your final thoughts on LEGO, on the community, on Bionicle, on BZ Power? Because I think it's, it's safe to say that if somebody can talk about LEGO uh, and Bionicle and BZ Power having such an impact uh, on their life like this, I think that you have the 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 uh the uh the stripes and the wear and tear to show it uh that you that you really have seen uh, i mean a good amount from the beginning you've continued to be here you've seen i mean bz power bionicle the lego community fans uh any overall thoughts after years of re reflection on what's kind of transpired yeah yeah like you said i, I have been around for a while i am quite old um <laughs> okay. at least at least you, you don't in... look a day over 14. <laughs> thanks no i mean at least for the botanical community you know i'm definitely on the upper end of the age spectrum um but you know having kind of seen the the community grow and evolve there's no better time right now i think to be a lego fan um uh, the sets are fantastic you know bionicle is back uh it can't yes. get better than that um, but even outside of Bonicle, just all the sets that Lego has been putting out lately, like, like Scooby-Doo, right? They're, they're yeah. just so, so solid. Um, you know, you have these nostalgia factors of the sets you built as a kid, mm -hmm. but I don't think they can compare to, to the sets we have today. And just with the engagement um, among the fans, you know, with the different uh, contests and, and discussions and conventions. It's just so great. And plus you have the Lego uh, company itself just supporting uh, us, you know, at different conventions, sending uh, d the different sites free sets to, to use as reviews or to give away. Uh, it's just fantastic. And there's no, like I said, no better time to be a Lego fan right now. Uh, just embrace it while it's, uh, you know, while Lego is this hot thing on top, uh, make yeah. sure you're getting as much fun and enjoyment of, of it as you can. And uh, make sure all your friends know how awesome it is and so you can just grow the, the community even bigger and have more fun. There you go, see, so enjoy it. Everything is awesome and it's not just a song, it's the whole fandom and the whole group <laughs> and the whole toy line and everything. Uh, any final thoughts that you wanna uh, deliver to the members or any final? Uh, I mean, you know, it's, it was a pleasure to, to be on. I'm glad I could uh, talk to you guys and uh, build a set that I've been meaning to build for a while. Um, you know, if you ever have any questions or anything about BZ Power, just feel free to drop me a PM. It may take me a little bit to reply, but I, I will get back to you. Uh, and I'm always, you know, up for a conversation to talk about Lego or different things. If you see me at a convention, uh, feel free to stop by and, and talk and have a chat. Uh, you know, we're, we're you know, a kind of community here and, you know, I want everyone to, to be included. So, um, you know, have fun on BZ Power. Make sure, you know, you're checking out uh, all the, the news and reviews we're posting and uh, share your own content, share your own creations. You know, make, you, you get out of this hobby what you put into it. So the more, the more you're able to do and, and add to it, the, the more fun you'll have, I think. Here we go. Andrew speaking the truth. BZ Power is lovely, the staff is lovely, <laughs> and Andrew is lovely. Otherwise, I can say this with full, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, truth, and not because I'm in front of a camera. I would not have stayed if it were not for the fact of wonderful people like Andrew that keep the site running, that really uh, do the magic behind the curtains and really keep BZ Power as a, a place that I can also say very openly has changed my life for the better. So uh, <laughs> I'm glad that we have wonderful staff like Andrew and others and a wonderful community like that that really just makes every day a good day to be a Bionicle fan and a BZ Power member. Yeah, I always love hearing that, uh, you know, uh, of all the great experiences people have with the site, and that's what makes me keep coming back every day to, to make sure things keep running. 
There you go. So see, now you have to keep going to BZ Power so you can provide more experiences for Andrew to say BZ Power <laughs> is fantastic. I mean, he already has a lot, of course, but like he will add, add to the library that we will all have of why BZ Power is so, so cool. Right. The more the merrier. Exactly. Thank you so much, Andrew, for uh, talking with us. That was Black Six, everyone. And remember, if you enjoyed this episode, remember to leave some comments, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can keep going with our uh, Twitch streams, our reviews, our uh, other series. We actually have uh, this uh, it's called this month in Lego. This no, month this in month, Bionicle. This month in Bionicle yes. just started up, and it's going to be really cool. It keeps you. Uh, up to date on Lego news, on Bionicle news, so it should also be good in that sense. But go on the YouTube channel, subscribe, watch our videos, go to BZ Power, uh, post your mocks, post your uh, creations, uh, post your theories, talk, uh, mingle, uh, see the members, go to conventions, go to events, uh, form a lug, join a lug. Uh, as Andrew has pointed out, Take advantage of the toy line. Take advantage of the fans. Take advantage of the AFL community because it's out there. It's lovely. It's here to help you out, and it's here to make. Uh, uh, it's here. It's here to help you make memories that are going to last for years to come. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andrew. Uh, thank you so much uh, for staying with us, uh, uh, BZ Power members. Um, we will see you next month for the next episode, and we'll see who the next guest is. Uh, if you, uh, I will probably post on the, uh, on the, um, topic for Meet the Staff once we know what, who the next guest is, so you can actually start sending me some questions about that guest. Uh, but until that time, great seeing you, BZ Power. Stay frosty. <laughs> this was that. Bye-bye! Bye! -bye. Bye.